Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's chapter of Muskogee High School Football. I'm Bill Huddleston, along with the coach of the Ruffers, Josh Blankenship. Eerie situation last Friday evening as Muskogee prepared to Owasso about 5 o'clock. Not only did the buses with the Rams show up, but so did Mother Nature. Yeah, that wind came tearing through. Um, it, the nice part about it was the temperatures dropped way down. I uh, thought we were in for a great night of uh, weather and then unfortunately the lightning had other plans. Indeed, we had a little bit of a uh, repeat of what rougher football fans will remember from about three seasons ago, only that time it was a road trip. This past Friday night, game gets into action. We get about a uh, quarter and four and a half minutes, I guess four minutes and 44 seconds to mm -hmm. be exact, before the lightning strikes again, a halting play, and after almost an hour's wait, the officials there at the game make the determination to call the contest, and as a result, even with the scoreboard showing Owasso leading 28 to nothing, Ruffers and Owasso go back home still with the same record they came into the ball game. But Josh, as we take a look at some of this week's highlights, the Ruffers won the toss, and you opted to defer the choice to the second half. Explain that a little bit, and if knowing what was going to transpire was going to happen, would you have changed it? If I'd known we were only playing a quarter and a half, uh, we would have kicked off and uh, made them go against the wind to start. Uh, that wind was, was blowing through really strong. We, we talked about it as a staff uh, before we sent the captains out there trying to decide if we wanted to take the wind, which in essence when you do that, that means you're going to kick off at the beginning of both halves. Um, we decided to, uh, if we won the toss, go ahead and defer and, and, and let it play out as we normally would. Um, ended up they wanted to kick. Uh, we thought that would be something we were going to get an extra possession, get the ball both halves. Uh, obviously, you only play a quarter and a half, and that meant we were going against the wind pretty much the whole uh, game uh, that we played. And as strong as the wind was blowing, it was almost as if you were trying to go uphill yes. both ways. <laughs> and so as we take a look at some of the highlights from last week, we're going to roll the video here. We'll see if we can't maybe even pick up a little theory of coaching football 101, but we get a chance to see the Ruffers taking the field, coming in here on what was Hall of Fame night. First pass play here, complete to Anthony King, and he makes the catch just before contact. Anthony, uh, he's really stepping up for us big, and he's kind of becoming our go-to guy. Uh, and Trevor, again, still doing an excellent job of managing things. Uh, Jefferson Moore there on the boot. Uh, one of the things that we're, we're executing pretty consistently is that Trevor makes a great read there as the end comes up field. Has, has to pull it and get what he can get. Now on defense here was one of the substitutes. Freshman getting tested. Yeah, we've got a lot of young guys in there. Uh, on that one is Darian Macknack, one of our sophomores, makes a big play to knock the ball down. Uh, we've got guys in position, uh, guys that are starting to uh, understand what we're trying to accomplish, and now it's just a matter of executing. Back to Gerard Jones, making a little catch out in the flat there. Again, little screen game uh, going into the wind. Uh, that wind blowing as hard as it was, we're throwing little drags and screens, then we take a shot down the sideline on a little wheel route by Jefferson Moore. Great throw and catch by Trevor and, and Jefferson. All right, this next play is where we're going to try to give you a little coaching football opportunity here, Josh. Well, we're running just a basic inside zone play right here, and the idea in a zone is you want to build a wall, and you can see that wall being built where we, we've got the backers and D-line sealed to the si sideline there, to the boundary, and then in comes Anthony King to do the final little wash down of their linebacker. Uh, the quarterback's going to read the end. Obviously, you saw him pull it a moment ago. Uh, this particular play, he gives it, and if he, s he trusts that thing and surfs it out the back, uh, much like Owasso did to us, uh, he's going for days. So it's a matter of uh, just fine-tuning what we're doing. We're really close on a lot of things. And uh, it's unfortunate we only got a quarter and a half to be able to improve and get reps. 7-16 uh, is when the officials waved their hands, sent everybody to the dressing rooms, and that was with 7-16 left in the second quarter. Obviously, after about a 45-minute to an hour delay, it appeared the Ruffers and the Rams were going to go back out there, and then all of a sudden, boom, we get another flash of lightning, and that's ball game. Mm-hmm. So as uh, you come out of that ball game still with the same set of circumstances, don't get all the reps that I know you wanted for your players and the players certainly wanted, but what can you take from this outing against Owasso in preparation? Well, we get, it, we get a few moments of film, obviously. We're always going to study that and critique that. Uh, more than anything, I think uh, we realize, uh, we talked about it at, in, in the field house there after, after the game was called, but we're not even guaranteed uh, 10 games. And uh, when, when something could be taken as quickly from, from those seniors as it was that night, 
um, we've got to prepare with a sense of urgency in, uh, in those. We really challenge those sophomores and freshmen that we've got playing with us. Um, we understand there's a lot of pressure on them. I mean, th that's no easy task in 6A football to go play or start as a freshman and a sophomore. Uh, but at the same time, we're asking them to grow up fast and, and try and take a little bit of that uh, desire uh, to go compete and uh, give everything they have from those seniors. I mean, those seniors, it just oozes out of them. So we're encouraging those young guys to get around those seniors a little bit more. Well, one of the guys that Coach Blankenship and the staff and the team all together is counting on to provide that type of leadership and direction for the football team in 2012 is our champion of the week, Hayden Comer. And the Redhead is going to join us here in a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about his intensity for the game and why he believes it's so important to be a champion both on and off the field. That when we come back here on the Rougher Coaches Show on TV15. Welcome back, everybody. Bill Hollis along with the coach, Josh Blankenship, here in this second segment of our Rougher Coaches Show. And I refer to him as the redhead, but he plays with a passion of rougher green. Josh Blankenship, our champion of the week, Hayden Comer. Uh, Hayden's one of those guys that we're trying to uh, duplicate and multiply. Uh, he's, he plays with fanatical effort. Uh, you can tell he loves playing the game. Uh, just yesterday in practice, we've got a little thing we do in our conditioning um, where when we finish a drill, uh, we want to see who's up on the line ready to run another one. And it doesn't matter how tired he is, he's up in a stance showing everybody that he's ready to do another one. And it's funny, we even talked about it yesterday while it, while it was happening. All of a sudden you look and there's three, four, five more other guys doing the same thing. Uh, so his energy is contagious. So it's leadership by example. Hayden, is that how you see it? Yes, sir, most definitely. Talk a little bit about your responsibilities as a linebacker in the rougher defensive scheme here in 2012. Well, our defense has kind of changed due to Fayetteville's offense, but now we have a three-man front, and now I have both B and C gaps, so it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a hard thing to do. Now, is it more of a read and react, or is it just a go to the football? <laughs> more of a read and react and then go. All right, so you kind of have to uh, sometimes bridle back just a little bit, yes, I sir. guess. Yeah. Yes, sir. We could tell from just, I mean, I can almost see the, the beat red face that he plays with. That's just that passion and love I know he has for the game. He does, and uh, it's one of those things why he's here. He's the champion of the week, uh, but he does that thing in all areas of his life, or he, he operates that way in every area of his life. He's, he's like that in the classroom. Uh, he's like that walking the halls, and he's like that in the community. He, that's just the type of character he has. Hey, what does it say to you? What does it mean to you to have been selected as this week's champion of the week? Uh, it means everything. It means I'm doing my job. It means I'm showing my, my team, my community, what I've been doing and how the reward I get. Okay. Now, after high school, you've kind of already made plans for the future academically, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Headed where? Uh, University of Oklahoma. Going to be a Sooner. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, tell us what your plans of study are because I know it's, uh, while it, a lot of people would say, oh, he's going to OU. Maybe that means football. <laughs> no, I think there's even more bigger things ahead, right? Yes, sir. Uh, to major in petroleum engineering and a major in business. Obviously, Josh, he's headed for much more financial reward than what it is for either one of us. And that's why he, he's on the TV show so early. We're going to make sure I got that relationship established before he goes <laughs> off and makes all the money. Exactly. Hayden Comer has got a, a bright future ahead of him, not only at this 2012 season, but also in his days beyond high school. He's our champion of the week. Hayden Comer, you'll see him out there. He wears number 45, but he's number one in the hearts of the Rougher fans. Back with a look at this week's opponent. Fayetteville Bulldogs. When we continue with the Rougher Coaches Show here on TV15. Welcome back here on TV15. Bill Huddles along with the coach of the Ruffers, Josh Blankenship. First two games of the year at home at Indian Bowl. Now it's time to get on the bus, and make the two hour plus drive over to Fayetteville. And for our fans that may be traveling, maybe a little bit of advice. Plan a little extra time because of some construction around the school. Apparently they're uh, working on a new indoor facility and uh, a lot of other construction projects around the uh, their campus, so they, they've advised us not to show up until uh, 4.30 or later. 4.30, and that is a scheduled 7 o'clock kickoff there in Fayetteville, and for those of you who may not be aware of where the stadium actually is, it's just to the east and a little bit north of uh, the University of Oklahoma and Walton Arena, so that'll kind of give you some idea if you've ever been to Fayetteville, but you can Google it, find your directions to Harmon Stadium. Now, give us the scouting report on the Bulldogs, who, like the Ruffers, have still yet to win a game. Uh, there's a lot of teams around uh, right now that are, are still winless, and uh, it's, it's early. And uh, teams like us and teams like Fayetteville, uh, Jinx, Union, uh, we're scheduling 
teams that are going to be a challenge here in the preseason. We want our weaknesses exposed before we show district play. Um, so we're, we're figuring those things out pretty quickly. Uh, Fayetteville, uh, they won the 7A state championship last year in Arkansas. Uh, I see them as, as equal to the Owasso's and the Broken Arrows and the Unions and the Jinxes. Uh, they're right up there with the best of them. So we've got our work cut out for us. They, they haven't won a game yet. They're hungry like we are. Uh, they're loaded with Division One talent. They've got a lot of prospects. Um, so we're excited about the opportunity. We're excited about uh, playing a, a team of that caliber on the road as well, get a little experience before we start district play. Certainly the Ruffers will uh, have that big test Friday night. We hope that most of you Ruffer fans can make the short journey over to Arkansas, over to Fayetteville for that 7 o'clock kickoff. Remind you, 7, not 7.30. Our TV show on MuskogeeRuffers.tv will begin at 6.30 along with the radio broadcast on 100.3. And Josh, when we come home from the land of the hogs, hopefully that record says win number one for the green and white. That and hopefully we have some AQ chicken with us. <laughs> All right. Coach Josh Blankenship, I'm Bill Huddleston for our Champion of the Week, Hayden Comer. Thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Ruffer Coaches Show. We'll see you back here next week for another exciting run.